What's going on guys? Welcome back here to episode number 14 of the EAFC career mode. Luton Town's first away day victory in our last game and that win over Aston Villa today. Going to try and get through to the halfway stage of the season if I can. So with that being the case, I need to stop nattering on and get straight to it. Starting off with a transfer for Joe Taylor. To be honest here, I just really want to get this guy's salaries off the books. But I don't think it really matters where I would accept a bid for. I mentioned this before, on 4.8k a week... I don't think any club is going to be able to match that salary. So for now, I'd rather just stay here and pick up the paycheck. But starting off today, uh, free scouting updates and an academy update as well. As we look for a new gem, and we might well have just found one in Oliver Marks. So far from Poland, uh, we've got a couple of players in our academy that could be all right. But at the moment, not really finding anyone who I'm too excited about until... Oh my goodness! One of the highest market valuations I've seen in a long time. Peter Kaczmarek, the Polish goalkeeper. Is he the new Szczesny? Well, I'll need to release a player from the academy. And Dalton, who we have there, hasn't got the best of potentials. Oh, okay, yeah, him. Straight away, <laughs> straight away. He can definitely go at 69-81. And that potential isn't the best style, to be fair. But uh, that does at least pave the way for us to pick up Peter. He looks very impressive indeed. Oh my goodness. And sorry, I'm just, I'm just going to run to it because you see it. Hang on, that potential is amazing as well. But it's okay, we'll, we'll leave him for now. You see it down there. I see it as well. Alex Anderson, finally, we're picking up some gems with our scouts. It's even higher than Peter's market valuation. Right, who's the unlucky man that needs to make away then? Who's the unlucky man here? I think Finn Anderson. I was quite big on the guy initially, but... Um, I like the traits, to be fair, but 68 to 84, only 68 rated as well. Uh, sorry, 58 rated even. I, I, I think, I'm sorry, mate, but you've got, you got to make way. You've got to make way for your young compatriot because this guy looks like the next star in Norwegian football. Martin Odegaard, Erling Haaland, Alex Anderson, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I, to be honest, I, I, I might just continue to scout on these guys because I just, I just want to get straight to those guys and see how good they are in, a, in, the, uh, in the academy. Can't get me words out, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so Peter and Anderson, they are both 66 rated. And I think to me, Alex is looking the best here as a young fullback. Oh, he looks really exciting, doesn't he? Really, really exciting. Already 71 stamina, technically really solid defensively already with high medium work rates. Should I promote him straight away? I mean, because when you think about it, we've only got Connor Roberts as an official right back in our team right now. I might just give him a pro deal right now and see if he can challenge our new Welsh international. I'll put him on a defensive wide back development plan, but I might promote him in today's episode. To be fair, for the rest of the academy as well, it's still looking pretty solid right now. I'm very big on Declan Fletcher, I must say. The highest overall outside of our two new guys joining the academy. He does look pretty decent. Sander Ali still looks okay, I would say. He's starting to drop a little bit in his potential. But I, th th there's a few players here that really excite me, I must admit. A few players here that I'm very, very big on. And no doubt about it, the future is bright. I need to get a development plan on this guy here. Yes, guys, I've learned my lesson. Let's get his skill moves up. Um, as a right midfielder, I can actually move him into the middle to CAM actually, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, I think I'll do that instead. Even so, yeah, really excited. I kind of want to promote him now, but I'll I'll wait just for the time being. And also, guys, whilst I'm setting my lineup for the first game today against Arsenal, um, I've got a question for you. I've got a comment from uh, Sound Asleep O One who said you need to take off the handball function. It's stupid for penalties. There's a trick to get more penalties. Turn it off. Uh, personally, I do quite like it. However, I want to throw this to you guys in the comment section down below. You saw a handball in the last episode, well, a couple of them actually, and what do you guys think about it? Should I turn the handball feature off or on? It's the first crewman I've done with the handball feature on, but if you'd prefer me take it off, then I'll do so. Let me know in the comment section down below, would you rather keep the handballs on or would you rather me take them off? It's your choice. So first game, Arsenal at Kenilworth Road, looking for back-to-back -back wins, and our first win at Kenilworth Road since that scalp against Manchester City. Still to the big boys pretty well this season. Let's do it again and get a big three points here. Yeah, personally, I, I quite like the handball being on. It's a bit of chaos, and, and right now, I think this season, I'd have to do the numbers, I'd have to do the stats, but I'm pretty sure we've had just as many handballs in our favour as against us. I'll never forget those two we conceded in 10 minutes against Barnsley in the cup. But uh, yeah, I, I personally, I quite like it, but I'm more than happy to turn it off if the majority of you think that's the right thing to do. Or maybe there is an option, actually, where you can turn it off, but, uh, sorry, keep it on, but have it turned off for penalties, so it can be handball anywhere else on the pitch, inside of the pe outside 
of the uh, of the penalty area. Anyway, your choice. Still first time at falling to Arsenal. Good to board away in a dangerous area. Murich makes a great save and a scramble. Sees Ryan Giles just about clear in the nick of time. Jesus. To Odegaard. Oh, he's just sat Murich down. And Arsenal's captain oozing class. Talking to great Norwegian youngsters. Well, there's one right there starting to hit his prime at the Emirates. The former Real Madrid man. As, uh, sorry, I want to watch you on the replay because he's just sat Murich down. And no wonder he looks disappointed. This is just so composed as he makes the cross of Owen to National take a seat. Corner. Arsenal, Jorginho, Masraoui. Back to Bakayo Saka in acres of space here. Now Martinelli goes for goal. Murich beats it behind for a corner as we're still down by one. Haven't really had much of the ball in this game. Arsenal dominating possession as you'd expect. Looking comfortable on the ball. There's going to be a second goal in this game. You put your money on the gunners going 2-0 up. With Declan Rice finding space, and I think it did strike a hand, and it did. Speaking of penalties, Kilman turns his back on the shot. It deflects off the hand, and the Gunners have a spot kick. What's that saying? Handball giveth, handball taketh away. It's the right call, though. Definitely struck the hand of the ex Wolves man, and Saka is denied by Murich. Second penalty save this season. Yeah, like I mentioned, I do feel as though handballs are very even in this save. At the moment, I think we've had as many go against us as we have go for us. But, like I mentioned, if you do want me to turn it off, I'm happy to do that. As Murich, once again, pushes it behind for a corner. Right now, if it wasn't for our Kosovo number 49, we'll be down two, three goals, and this game would be over. Still hanging on in there, courtesy of our new shot stopper. Saka, looking for space, goes for goal, and again, I'm calling upon the ex Burnley Man City goalkeeper saying, calm it down, guys. Murich to Ballard, and there's O'Hare takes so we'll give it back to Ryan Giles and go all the way back to Murich. As we're still down by one and haven't really had much of the ball, and thus haven't really been able to create anything. Pelly and Panzu to Giles, and because Saka just overcommitted slightly there, that's given Giles a chance to run in behind. Now, if O'Hare can get in behind Masraoui, the pace he's got, there's a great chance here, and we might not get many more. And a buy on the turn. Barkley! Oh! Might be the only chance we get there. Executed perfectly, just couldn't put the finishing touch on the move. Barkley denied by Ramsdale. And Chong's header is also pushed behind for a corner. Oh, chance for the Gunners to... Wrap this game up here in stoppage time. It's Saka. It's Jorginho. It's across to Jesus. And the dagger fired in. The Brazilian ends any chance of a loot and fight back. 2-0 and it's a deserved victory. To be honest here, yeah, Arsenal were in control for the majority of the game. Had it not been for Murich, we would have lost that game comfortably. Couldn't take the chance through Barkley, but really in the end, I think a deserved win for Arsenal. Right, moving straight on because the following game was a really poor goal to throw away against West Ham. Back home for the next one and it's Middlesbrough. Newly promoted, good start to the season, 4 wins and 11 coming to Kenilworth Road. Well, the defence has picked up, which is nice to see, but goal scoring woes are back on the menu, boys, as we're... <laughs> Still dead up to 0-0 in the second half begins here. One of the rare games where we're probably considered favourites here. So, could do with capitalising, to be honest. Instead, just not getting the creativity and thus not able to get any proper chances. Can't really blame Sargent in this game or Adebayo up top. When the creativity's not there, what can the strikers do? Do you know what I mean? There's the Borough to get themselves in front. Flag stays down. They've done so. Mills for a lead at Kenilworth Road. And the visit is in front. Cool. Come on, still time to find a, a late level here. Cool. No, he's done it! Oh, he's done it again! Boss Bogley to the rescue! And the death! Goal out of nothing! Borough flat out! And in a game where we created absolutely nothing! Ross Barkley pulls the rabbit out of the hat, gets it out of his feet, 23 yards, levels it past Yang, and into the far corner, rescued by the veteran. I mean, I call him a veteran, he's not, he's 30, you know? I guess in, in modern football, you probably do start to consider veterans being anything over 30, but veterans shouldn't be considered 30, otherwise I'm a veteran. Am I a veteran? 
Well, I don't know, but the experience pays off there. Boss Barkley to the rescue again. Where would we be without this guy? Match day 13 on the back of the international break. Brighton away with no wins in our last three games. Let's try and put that right here on the south coast. Do you remember last season when we came on the opening day? And I was like, well, we can't do any worse than Luton did in real life. They were bad 4-1 and we lost 4-0. <laughs> Yeah, this is a long old RTG, and the problems are still here in Season 2. We go into the vast majority of our games as underdogs, including this one. Kilman to Cox, back in the lineup for this one here. He's got tons of space on the left-hand side as well. Now, he isn't actually the quickest, but he has got that technical ability, which serves him really well when required. Like, right now. Brilliant. Nakamba. Easy save, really. Comfortable high for the keeper, but great work from Cox. So the one thing, he's not, he's not actually the quickest of players. He's not slow, but he's not as quick as I would like him to be when playing on the wing. His strong head's just over. Herrera to the hood. Whips one in dangerously. Ah! Oh, and volleyed it at the far post. Okay, it's all right. Came back in the last game. We'll do it again. Watch that shot from range. One of the Torres blocks. Oh, that is so unlucky. <sighs> Deflected right back into their possession. And you can't do anything about that. Tackle skip up. Oh, come on. Got to be stronger, though. Oh, man. It's just too easy. Just like last season, man, problems remain. Is this just a case of needing to take your medicine? Like, we're little Luton Town, man. Still, we're four star. We're still one of the weakest sides in the division. We shouldn't be expecting to go away to Brighton and get three points. Three more scouting updates done, and academy with it as well. Jack Goodwin could be all right as well. This is the problem, man. Our academy is now full to the brim. We've got to start making decisions, promote or release. I think, personally, what we should do is because we're going to lose Kaminsky in January anyway, is promote our two star youth players now. And to me, I don't know, what do you guys think about Anderson here? Do you think this guy could possibly play as a DM? Because he's not the quickest. Crossing's poor. Uh, well, poorish. But maybe as a DM to me. Once he gets that high defensive work rate, I'm going to try and convert him to CDM and possibly throw him in for either Nakamba or Reedvald. But yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to promote the best two here. And uh, yeah, try and try and loan them out in January if not give them game time. But definitely give Jack Goodwin a scholarship. He looks pretty decent him. Poland now starting to find a few good ones. I'm going to continue to scout in on him though, just in case that potential does drop significantly, as it often does. The longer you wait, by the way, for those that don't play career mode or haven't played in a while, I might have forgotten. The longer you wait when you're scouting a player, the uh, smaller the ranges become. So over time, you'll get a better picture as to how good they actually are. So after four months, you then start to see a player like this, for example, might have had really high overall and potential to begin with, or so you'd think. But now, as time goes on, you'll see it start to, to close, if you will. The range starts to close, and you get a better picture and a better guess on how good they actually are and could be in the future. So Johan Johansson is an excellent name, and I will give him an academy deal. And Christopher Jorg, I tell you, what, we're starting to get some great players now. I think, unfortunately, Sander Ali isn't quite going to make it now with that potential dropping quite significantly. But that's my point. When we first saw Sander Ali, we were like, oh, yeah, Erling Haaland 2.0. But now we see, after a while, the potential range starts to de uh, decrease and you start to get a better picture on how good these guys actually are. However, this guy does it pretty decent, so I give him an academy scholarship. He's not going to make it, though. So, Johan Johansson, which is an amazing name, by the way, uh, does look pretty decent. Now, I need to get that high attacking work rate, though, if possible, if he's going to play on the wing in our team with the pace he's got as well. Uh, Andrej back still looks pretty decent as well. I want to get his work rate up to a high as well. Um, yeah, still looking pretty solid right now. Oliver Marks, I think possibly this guy could work as a CAM in this team, no, personally. Personally, maybe in a natural CM at some point, not for now though. And uh, Jorgen still with a good potential as well to me. I think possibly, once again, I'd say, yeah, I'd say once again, get that attacking work out from medium to high. So, yes, guys, I have learned my lesson now for those that are curious. I am starting to put my players on development plans. 
So the two players just promoted. Uh, Peter has the exciting prospect tag. So can't see him getting many minutes ahead of Muric right now. So I think what I'm going to do with him is try and loan him out in January if possible. And where is Anderson? There he is. Oh, yes. Potential to be special. We got another one. I, I think to me, though, like I mentioned a moment ago there, to me, I think personally this guy will be better as a DM. Personally, I'm going to get a high defensive work rate up first. And then once I've got that, I'll convert into CDM. Slipped into the relegation zone for the following game. Palace at home, absolutely massive. Need to win this one and get our first after none in four to escape the bottom three. It's a huge basement battle here. Careful, careful, careful. Yes, Connor, well done, mate. And oh, just about kept it in play. As we should escape here. Just put your foot on the ball real briefly and then wait for a better chance to counter. Like right now, I need a tangerine shirt in the middle. And a Bayern! This guy dips for a while, but then comes back when we need him most. He's done it again. Easy. Easy. Ballard's well out of position here. Which means we need to cover a markup in the middle. Muric, well done. I know we've got a game away in West London in the week, but I don't want to rest anyone right now as we're still clinging on to a one-goal league. Got to keep the starters out. Let's try and close these three points out and again... I'm reliant on my shot stopper. I'm reliant on my shot stopper still leading by one. That leveler is coming. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Yes, Ballard went in, mate, and I think that's going to do it, you know. My centre back is not going to go to right wing. I just needed a tangerine shirt to pass to. I've got one. Barkley. And a bio. Cox for the dagger. Luton's first win after 9 4. The Short King does it again. Played absolutely perfectly from right to left. There's always a man over. It's like I'm watching a rugby right now. Always a man over down the flanks. This time it's Joel on the receiving end. And he keeps his composure for, I think, his third of the season. And this one, the dagger. 2-0, and finally, Luton Town are back to winning ways. Man, oh man, did we need that. I'm going to give them a rest in the week, because once again, you see the fitness there down to 31. Three goals and an assist in 10 games in the league, averaging a direct contribution to a goal in almost every two games. But the problem this guy's got, well, West Ham knew it. That's why they released him, the lack of physicality. I don't mind the strength being low, the jumping being low, the aggression being low. It's the stamina that's the problem right now, being so low at 56, knowing that in midweek, he's got no chance of starting those games, and he won't be at full energy for the next week either. Even so, he's been big this season. What a star. And Josh Sargent says he wants to leave after just under 12 months. I'm starting to notice that a lot in this year's career. And I must say, I don't know if you guys have seen this too, but now if you've got a player that does have the important squad status, it does seem as though they're, um, they're a lot less likely to sit on the bench and extend a run of games, which makes a lot of sense. But I mentioned before, I wish you could just talk to your players and say why that's the case, you know. Moving on, midweek, following game, West London Fulham away. Got to rotate most of my starters for this game, though, due to those fitness issues. So I'll certainly take a point, and if we can get it, that would be just one loss in our last five games. Starting to find our feet a little bit. Fro, Luton. And by the way, guys, in the last episode, I said if you hold L1 and R1, that will switch to your long throwing taker. Actually, someone corrected me and said, Doxy Boy, no, don't press anything. Don't touch anything, and it will switch it. So right there, it's switched to Connor Roberts. And I'm going to ask Colton Morris if I can to go towards that penalty spot. But don't want to go too close to Leno. He's good in the air. And just try and see if I can cause a bit of chaos there. Byrne decides to stay on his line. And Colton Morris is denied. Almost our first goal, a goal from that long throw in there. Great save with a German. And Ogbene heads wide. Oh, Joe pulling in you with the interception. Adama Traore has got the pace. Tom, don't come across too far. Great save. And a rebound turned in. Seven minutes away from a really good point of a much changed lineup and a rebound goal will cost us the point. Right there, I just don't want to commit, but you see that body of Adama Traore so strong. Great shielding. And, and that is one thing this year which has made the game a lot harder. The AI are very good from stepping inside. And if you commit, there's a chance you're going to give away a penalty or possibly a free run in behind you. If the positioning's not perfect, you're also going to give away a great chance. Callum O'Hare for the level of straight away. Oh, he's put it wide. 
I can't believe I lose this game, man. Sickening, Rostar. Absolutely sickening. I don't know how I didn't win, let alone get nothing. I mean, that is so frustrating. And now Fred wants to leave as well, but that does kind of make sense, to be fair. He's, uh, he's barely played since coming back from loan. So we're, we're still outside the bottom three just for now, as uh, one of our young goalkeepers is going to go and join Spezia on a short-term loan, which I kind of like as well, because I think this guy's good enough to be our backup goalkeeper next season. So just half a year of doing well, I think, in Italy. But yeah, following game, uh, let's move straight on. Sorry, uh, Newcastle. Coming to Kenilworth Road, aiming to bounce back here on the back of that really sickening loss. Let's get back-to-back -back wins at home this season. Come on. I'm going to throw Anderson in at CDM for this game, see how he gets on as Sandro Tonali. Oh, it's just open the scoring with a beauty, man. Top bins. That is just a ridiculous goal. Yeah, I can't really do much about that one there, can I? Just a beauty of a strike by the former... AC Milan and Brescia midfielder and Newcastle have that early lead. And once again, another tough game. I don't want to end on a loss, man. You know I like to end on a win, but at the moment, it's going to be tough to see where the next win's going to come from because my form is just absolutely shocking to start this season off. And it's Adebayo on the turn, finds Cox. A lot of space down the left-hand side here for Joel. Back into Adebayo, takes it in his strike. Can he get away? He can. It's Elijah Adebayo, and it's off the post. Just couldn't squeeze it inside. Watch that free ball. There it is. There it is. Long staff. Great tackle by Cashin. Back in the 11 for this one. And a chance to break here down the right. We've played that really well. If Chong can get away from that target, he can. And there's Cox in the far post. Winger to winger. Joel Cox with another. Luton with the leveller. Massive, massive goal. Chong down the right. In behind target again. He struggled. I'm isolating that target down that left-hand side for Newcastle. Because he's struggling. And once again, it's a carbon copy. Just in behind target. Which means Tangerine Shirts get in the middle. Line up. As Pope sticks a left or right leg out, I think it was. And it's a crucial tackle. Matt Target has struggled all game long in this one. Well, in that game, I made Matt my target. And in the end, it paid off for our leveller. Couldn't find a winner, but I'll take the point. Just two defeats now in our last six games. Again, struggling to put wins on the ball consistently. But every now and then, a point, especially against a good side, is a good result. We'll have it. Final game today for sure, match day 17 in the Premier League, and it's a massive basement battle. Leicester away at the King Power in a relegation six-pointer. Both teams short on confidence and low on points, knowing a loss will leave them in deep trouble. Fox is away, huge relegation six-pointer. Look at here, with Kilman to beat. Max jockeying well though, and making a tackle that can't get out of it. Man, the amount of times that's happened to me this season, let alone this save. He's unbelievable. He does block the cross. It's a corner, but yeah, still tied at 0-0. KG opening half an hour here against the Foxes as Connor Cody's header is going to drop wide. Leave it out of my for a goal kick. Very nervy, as you'd expect. That was KG and as nervy as it can be for a relegation six-pointer. This, as to be expected, as oh, Roberts could have been through there, but I'm back to him. Couldn't really turn and get it across with enough power. So we'll work it from right to left instead, keeping it short and simple. As Reedwell finds out of bio. Elijah! Danny Ward with the save. Probably the only chance we'll get all game long. Just didn't get much conviction behind that. Cox with the corner. We've got height. And it's cleared. Temporarily. Oh no. Oh, had a bio shot blocked, it'll drop for a corner, but Barkley's in pain. Barkley is in pain. That is probably an ACL. I'll tell you what, it's not a bruise. Boss is down and he is out. Man. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's roll Chong on that right hand side, move our hair into the middle, and we'll just make that one change for now. That is a huge, huge blow. We're not for the, the header, collides with the Belgium. And it's a, it's a tough one to take, but I think that might be Barkley done for the season. Chong's going to come on, but that's a massive blow, that. That's a massive blow. 
And a bio! Wan He Chang to Connor Cody is getting a bit nippy now. Is Danny Ward hooks it up? Oh no, switched to Nakamba. Why did I have switched to Nakamba? Still tied at 0 0. I think both teams are going to go for the win now. Both teams in the late stages going for the win. And what we can't afford is a. Oh, I don't believe it! A star going down and a late loss as well. And that's exactly what we're going to get. Pina Monti on the turn. Across comes Ryan Giles. Carvalho for the finish. Game done. Leicester win and escape the bomb free at the expense of the Hatters. That was about as worse as a game as it could possibly be. We lose our star to a long-term injury. And we lose the basement battle too. Loot and Town are in major trouble. Can't believe we just lost that. I really can't. If a Barkley's injury as well, we'll end on that. How bad is the injury for the leader of this team? Massive, massive defeat to end on there. And I'll be honest, guys, I just saw it in the interview, but I didn't want to spoil it for you guys. It's here. Ross Barkley with a broken metatarsal. Done for two months, so it could have been a lot, lot worse. I've got to say, when I saw that in the interview, I don't know why they, they do that to you, man. It just takes it away from the climax, right? But even so, Barkley done for two months. It, it could have been a lot worse. It's a big blow, don't get me wrong, but at least it's not a season ender. Rest up, Ross, and we'll see you back around February, March time. And that will do it for today's episode, guys. So massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And with 3 million in the budget and a January transfer window about to open, the question is, as we enter the relegation zone, two games before the halfway mark, do we make a big transfer decision in January? Possibly sell a key squad member and bring in some reinforcements. Let me know in the comment section down below how you play this. Thanks for watching, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode where the transfer window will open very soon.